What's up everybody? Welcome to Claiming Christianity. My name is Steve. Today we're going to be taking a look at this. This is an NIV Thinline Bible put out by Zondervan. I know it's been a while since we've done Bible reviews, but I have quite a few coming. Uh, so I'll be able to put some reviews out there for you guys. I know I don't have a ton of NIV Bibles that I've reviewed. There's no reason behind that other than that I just haven't had a whole lot to review. But my kids happened to need just a simple basic Bible that they could carry to camp uh, this summer. And so we went around looking for what would work best for them. And this Bible looks like it's going to do the job with the size and the font size and the layout of the Bible. So I'm anxious to share it uh, with you because there's Bibles that range from... 10 or $15 all the way up to $300. And it's, I think that it's valuable to be able to show you what's out there so you can make the right decision for what you need. So without further ado, let's jump over to the table and do a full review of this NIV Thinline Bible. So let's take a look at this nice little Bible. Um, I, you guys know, I like to uh, kind of review all different sorts of Bibles here. And this Bible was bought, like I said, for a purpose. It's gonna be used for my kids. So I didn't need anything that's like a $200 Bible for them to bring to camp, right? There's some of the features on the back. The box actually comes in a really nice clamshell, or sorry, the Bible actually comes in a really nice clamshell box. And you can see that it says there uh, like $32.99 with the ISBN number. Um, that's not what I paid. <laughs> so despite the fact that this isn't technically considered a value Bible, um, the price is a value. I paid like $15 for it. Um, and I'm an adult male with an average size hand, you know, so you can tell it's going to be nice to carry around, but you also need to know it's, it's bonded leather and it's black. You guys know I love when I stamp this on the back. I don't care all that much when it's a Bible like this, but bonded leather is not <laughs> well known for it kind of holding up forever. Uh, so you just need to know that the, because of the way that it, the paste down liner here and sometimes the leather after years of use can get a little brittle and start breaking around the edges. I just want you to know that, um, it's one of those, you kind of get what you pay for types of things. So for $17, you're not getting a real nice goat skin Bible, but it's the perfect size. And I like the layout. It even has some silver kind of guilting here on the outside. Uh, it does come with two ribbon markers. The ribbon markers are all, they kind of folded them inside the pages, so they could be ironed. But they're small. Again, this is a Bible that you kind of get what you pay for. But there's different levels and different uh, tools for every job, right? So you see you get a real nice presentation page here. Um, and I always suggest you fill these out. You never know who's going to get your Bible a hundred years from now. And I would even go further. I like the Bibles that include like a family section, you know, births, deaths, marriages, all that kind of stuff. So if your Bible doesn't have that, write it in here. Cause I, I would love to have that in some of the Bibles that I've gotten passed down to me. And then we have the legal information. We'll see if I can zoom in here a little bit for those of you guys who uh, want the legal information, all the ISBNs and all that kind of stuff there. Um, and you can see by the table of contents here that it, this is a, a really basic Bible. What you're getting is the 66 books of the canon. There's a little preface to the Bible and there's a tables of weights and measures in the back. And that's really it. Uh, there's no cross references um, or study notes or anything to that effect. This is just a list of alphabetical. Uh, sometimes, especially if you're just learning the Bible, um, it's easier to find it alphabetically. If you don't know the order yet, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, you can look, oh, okay, Acts, that's on page 935. So that's what those alphabetical order of the Bible is there for. It might make it a little easier for you to find. And then I always suggest that you read through the preface. I told you guys I don't review NIV Bibles all that often. Uh, not for any particular reason. It's the most highly produced Bible, which means it's the most highly produced book uh, in all of history. Um, it's a translation that a lot of folks use. I just never got my hands on a whole lot of them. Um, but again, everybody's using them. So you want to read like why they translated this the way that they do. And just a little preface to the NIV translation. And then you jump right into the Old Testament. Um, and right into the Bible. Right? So it says that it's lay flat. It's not. Uh, this is Exodus and you can kind of see. Um, but after you work it in a little bit, it'll get there. Uh, but but th uh, this is the time it's going to take just a little bit of, of effort. 
As I flip through some of the pages here, um, you might notice that this is dual column paragraph format. All that that means, uh, by the way, is I, when I grew up, I didn't even know that verse by verse was a thing. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Um, but verse by verse is, it, it's always verse by verse in poetry. The poetry sections always have each one of the verses. See here, kind of, uh, you know, what is it? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But you can get Bibles where they're, it's all done that way. It's not laid out in the poetry setting. Like, you know, see here, it's it justified in the center and it looks a little different, but you can get verse by verse here. And some folks like that. Some folks don't. I prefer verse by verse these days, um, but it's not a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination. Most of us are used to reading in paragraph format. So that's why I mentioned the two. Just know that those options are available. Now you might see here that there are in the bottom corner here, um, some footnotes. So what a footnote is, is just something that happens in the text they want you to know about. Maybe it talks about a cubit and it wants you to know how far a cubit is. Uh, maybe it's a word that they've translated one way and maybe in a, in the ESV translation, for example, they use a slightly different English word for that translation because it's a hard, uh, word to translate from Greek or from Hebrew in this case to English. Um, so there's always going to be little minor footnotes. You can see them and those just appear in the bottom right corner. There's not a whole lot of them. And like I said, there's no references. What you do get is a, about an inch, uh, maybe three quarters of an inch. So if you're a writer, there's not a ton of space to write, but what this Bible is going to be really good at is being portable. Um, it's a nice like nine point font, uh, which, which is excellent. That's one of the reasons why I chose it for my kids was that it's going to be an easy enough font to read. It's a nine point font and it's red letter. I stayed open here to Nehemiah just for the only reason that it does start a new chapter. I love when they do this. Um, some Bibles start a new chapter here, right? So it, at this ends, they just start it right away. I really like when they take the, when they just start it on a brand new page. And then you do get a little bit of room to write if you wanted to write something. Um, so let's flip open to kind of one of my favorite sections here. I usually try to open up to um, Isaiah or Jeremiah and find a good section, although Isaiah is going to have a lot of poetry. Uh, let's flip open to here, Jeremiah. And this is why. You guys know I like to show you right next to each other poetry versus uh, non-poetry for lack of a better term for that, just to show you what the difference between the two is. And a few of these books have poetry and, and the regular paragraph format right next to each other. Now the poetry section is a good opportunity to show you some ghosting. So see these letters that are behind here? That's a, it's called show through or ghosting. And every Bible is going to have that. This Bible paper is on the thinner side. That's what makes it a thin line Bible. It's very small. So the thicker the paper is, the nice thick GSM, 36 GSM paper is going to have less ghosting. Uh, but it's going to be a fatter Bible just by nature. Now, this Bible is line matched. Um, it looks line matched to me, especially in these poetry sections. And what line matched means is the poet, let me see if I can get real close here. I don't know if, there we go. Um, the line behind it lines up exactly with the line in front of it. And that's a really nice feature. It makes it very readable. In sections like poetry, you're always going to get a little ghosting. But when you flip open to books that are not books of wisdom and don't have a whole lot of poetry in them, it makes it very pleasant to read. Um, because there's not a whole lot of just, it's hard to explain, but words kind of jumbling up the, um, you know, you, you've got show through on the back and it's in between the lines. And so it might make it a little bit less pleasant to read is all. Um, so as we continue here and almost wrap up, because again, there's not a whole lot of features to this Bible and that is exactly why I bought it. Um, it is red letter edition. You guys know I have trouble with red letters. But I can see the red letters on this. Even with these lights, I, I have some crazy new lights that I'm... As a matter of fact, if I'm trying to step my game up here with these reviews and put out a better video, let me know if you can see the Bible better. Uh, I have some some lights that I've added that I'm excited about. But I can even see the red letters here. Sometimes the red is so like deep, it's like a deep crimson red or whatever, that, uh, that I can't see it because you all know I'm colorblind. Um, but I can see this red. It shows through. And for some of you, that's a really big feature. 
I do also happen to know that for some of you, you won't buy a Bible that is in red letter. That's another thing I'd like to hear about, to hear from you. If you're watching this and you don't like red letters, I want to know why. If you do like red letters, I want to know that too. Uh, and let's keep it nice. Sometimes people get a little funny about that. And I think that it's just a personal preference thing. But that's about it. Um, you know, in the back, you get no extra paper, just this little cardboard sheet. Um, and, and that's it. That's all that, that is to this NIV Finline Bible. Um, I'm excited to show it to you because, again, this channel is about uh, encouraging and equipping Christians. And, and, you know, you might want a Bible to just leave in the car. Or you want to stick it in a backpack or you're going camping. Um, and you want to know what you can get for 15, 17 bucks and then you drop it in a river and you're not all that sad, you know, accidentally, uh, this might be the right tool for that job. Uh, you know, whether or not it's your everyday carry of the Bible that you study out of, uh, you know, or not. So I'll include links down in the description if you're interested in this. Uh, there might even be some other cover, cover options. I'm hoping that there are. <laughs> so each one of my kids, I have three girls, um, can have a different color cover. You guys know how that goes. Hey, if uh, you have any questions, anything that I didn't cover on this Bible, please let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer those with the information that I have. Hey, thank you guys for uh, watching the video today. I'm really blessed to be able to share with you guys these resources because again, you can't just walk into a store these days and look through a Bible to decide what's going to work for you. Uh, translation, font size, cover size. And so it's been a huge blessing for me to show you this, these Bibles. I hope that you've gotten value out of this content. And don't forget, be the Christian you claim to be.